Hey, what's going on, folks? This is another uh, quick demo that I'm planning on doing with Ansible. Um, just the last couple days, I've uh, been just mind blowing, and ideas have just been flying all over the place. And I wanted to do a pretty more uh, a more extensive demo about uh, you know just doing something that I would normally do in my own lab or or something that I would find useful for myself. And one of the things that I decided it was the um, the like an MPLS core, a uh, basic MPLS core setup. Um, just walk you through the topology. I'll go through the so I'll go through the Ansible configuration files. I'll go through some basic GNS3 setup, um, and as well as the uh, playbook files on in the templates that I use to configure this. But essentially, what I did was I went ahead and did a a little bit of a modified base configuration for GNS3. Um, and what that consists of is I added some lines for the line VTY, I added a username um, because one of the prerequisites for Ansible to work successfully is that it needs to be able to SSH into your uh, workstation or into whatever your host is. And in this particular case, my host is my uh, actual iOS routers. Um, so part of that is for some reason when GNS3 before it used to I'll show you something. So before it used to actually do the host name with a variable, for some reason it's not doing that after you load the router onto the um, to the um, topology. Um, it might be something a bug or I don't know what the case is, but essentially you're going to notice that every router is going to have this host name um, already there. All right. So just pay attention to the tabs until the actual Ansible goes and configures the routers. Um, configure the routers. So one of the things that uh, you'll see is I got this interface going crazy. As part of my template, I actually configured a dedicated management interface that I put it in management VRF. So it doesn't have an IP address currently, but that will change here shortly. So the only thing that I need to do on all the GNS3 routers is add this IP address to this interface as well as uh, generate an RSA key. Um, and essentially this is going to be the basis of all my labs because I want to plan on starting to use Ansible for just about everything that I'm doing with, with my labbing just to make things a little bit easier, especially for base configurations or stuff that I do on the fly. I want to be able to just spin up a quick network um, without thinking about it. Um, so let's go ahead and start. So let's go on R1 and router 1. In each router we're just going to go interface 1 slash 3. And I'm going to go address 200.1. And this is the network that I'm using um, dedicated for this. So, one of the things I'll just go ahead and put duplex full. That's the reason why I'm getting that message there. It's because it's it's getting messages, CDP messages, from my actual um, 3750 in my network. You do a show CDP neighbor. I should be able to see it. Yeah, see. Um, so, it's actually, well, this is my 2960. It's my gigabit switch, but. Yeah, it's actually seeing that, so that's the reason why. So, and with this being GNS3, there's some really weird things going on as far as the actual um, coding. So each device will just go ahead and add that piece of configuration there. Uh, so IP address. This is router two, and then duplex full. And then same thing on R slash three. And this might seem a little tedious, but <laughs> it's not that bad. Um, I, I'd rather this way. I could have preset my IP addresses, but that would be a little bit more work on myself um, later on. But I just wanted to show you guys how this is actually implemented from scratch. If I was to do a, you know, a, a lab, a brand new lab from scratch. Um, so we'll do this again. The address dot zero dot five. 
Welcome to any TPD files again. Duplex four. And then for router six. to do the crypto key so crypto rc crypto generate r, r generate crypto key generate yeah. and we'll do a modulus of 768 because that is the minimum needed for a ssh version 2 for the cisco router so just go ahead and do all that and all these devices Right, it's good. It's good. Go. I'm actually logged into my an RDP session into my um, Ubuntu uh, workstation. I have a Ubuntu server that's running my. Um, Ansible, and then I have a Ubuntu workstation that's actually running a GUI front end talking to my GNS3 server. It's a little bit of uh, craziness going on, but you know, just letting you guys kind of get an idea of what the topology looks like. All right, good. So I should be able to ping. Let me see. I should be able to ping. I hope this doesn't. This doesn't, uh, it's probably going to be my private network, which I really don't want to do. So we'll do this 0, 0, 1. One's good. And so right now I'm logged into my Ansible server on this tab here. So you can see I can ping 1, 2, 3, 4. Six. Beautiful. Okay. So I got pings to all my uh, core devices here. Um, I probably want to see. I, I, I disabled the one setting as far as doing the SSH key checking um, for the certificate. So we'll, we'll see if I need to go in. Typically, what I've been doing before I, I start these labs is I'll log into each router and do a. Um, and do a uh, um, uh, like a uh, just to generate an RSA key for the public uh, pri private public key exchange, just so I don't have the uh, Ansible software doing that itself. I mean, normally um, you would have that already there, especially with the amount of times that you'd be interacting with the device. So um, now let's go ahead and look at the config. So I'll jump into my Windows 7 lab machine, and this is where I have Notepad plus plus um, open up. On, on all the scripts that are actually placed on the Ansible server. So uh, one of the first scripts that I'm going to do, this is the initial configuration as far as doing my uh, my my templates for my core routers, my four core routers. Um, and so with that being said, the pass the CLI, the variable that I'm setting up. Well, first off, let me show you the host file. And this is where Ansible gets really powerful. So this is one of many ways. Uh, you could do this, but in, in this particular case, I'm using my host file to declare my variables for all the templates that I already have pre-configured. So this is router one's IP address, his host, the router name, loopback zero, blah, 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 all this good information. And what this all correlates to here is it correlates to, where is it? So all these template files. So you see how I have core two, uh, core 3, uh, this is a PE um, template that I have. So it has my router ID, my one interface to my core router, my second interface to my core router, and my Ansible connection that it does, the name, description, Ansible controller. Um, and then I have one for my core to PE. Um, so for my core routers, I can just add a new PE downlink and you know specify that there. My new PE, I can do the same thing. This is a script that I created just to be able to deploy a brand new PE 
uh, in a new uh, in to two existing cores, or I can add more configuration files, or you know, more templates. Or really, this is the the playbook, but I can add more playbooks depending on what the the task is. But in this particular case, we'll go back to the original. Um, I have three instances or four uh, instances of me doing the core router configuration. And then here I have the instance of me configuring PE5 and its two uplinks to router 1 and 3. And then PE6 and its core uplinks to router 2 and 4. Um, now a lot of this code is repetitive. Um, this is more of a long way for me to do it. I'm still playing with this stuff guys. So um, I know I probably could have done a lot of this in one line. And just did like a while loop or for each loop, but um, I'm not there yet on with this Ansible yet. I'm just trying to get the idea. I'm still getting the hang of the actual syntax itself, but in this particular case, like I said, um, the end goal is I should have a fully functional. Um, well, I, I didn't do the BGP piece, but I should have a fully functional OSPF core with LDP running on top of it um, once these scripts ex execute. So let's go ahead and uh, start the first script. So I'll go back to my Linux box. All right, and so let's go ahead. It's going to be in Cisco management. It's the file. And so now I should be able to call on Ansible playbook. And then I should be able to do interface config.yaml. All right, so here's the moment of truth. So go through the playbook starting. You see it's starting uh, route, router one. You'll see the icons at the top there turn. Like I'm wondering now if I needed to do the. Okay, so it's doing it. So as you can see right now, it's showing that uh, orange means that the configuration has changed. So it's going through and, and uploading all the configs and getting all the pieces, the different pieces uh, uh, done for me. I mean, this usually takes me, if I was to hand jam this and not make any mistakes, or it, this normally would take me about maybe 15 to 20 minutes to do every, all, all six routers. Um, and that's me, you know, doing a lot of copy and paste and notepad plus plus and all this good stuff. So as I'm talking to you, this thing is doing it. And that's what's freaking amazing. Um, and I'm pretty much have it doing the entire uh, link, the, the entire interface or entire uh, configuration. So you see, I got nothing failed. I have two changes, which would be my rewrites going back over for the PE downlinks, and then I have my PE routers that are configured here. So when I go to the routers, uh, so you know what I gotta every time I do this. So let me go ahead and re-jump back into my the Ubuntu RDP session. Cool. It's all synced back up again. Okay, so I should be able to go to all my routers. So back on GNS3, um, I'm gonna show you right now that OSPF is running between all these devices and uh, you know my core routers and I should technically be able to verify all my routes and all that good stuff on, on all the devices so notice that my core router one is the host name core two is the host name core three is the host name core four uh, PE5 and PE6 right show IP interface brief so I the interface brief and still my interfaces are configured I even got it to even where it's doing <laughs> my interface description for me so let's see now show run interface loopback zero and this is from router six so essentially we'll, we'll go and do a trace route from router six to router five and you should see it go through the MPLS stack um, eventually getting to its destination going through routers two and four and then also uh to router three one um and five on the other end so it is a pretty awesome tool um uh, i don't really know what else to say about it i mean this is just the, the tip of the iceberg um I, you know you could start doing things where you know if you wanted to create your own web page front end and you know, have a lab available for the public, you can have an automated system where you just click a button and, you know, it automatically goes out and pre-configures it, you know, and with this being an iOS, say that I had my CSR 1000 Vs, the way I did my variables for my host file was that I can go in and say, okay, well, I'm not going to use GNS3 today. Let me go back to my 
land management. Uh, so I can say that I, I don't want to use GNS3 today and I want to be able to use, you know, maybe my um, my iOS XR lab, my iOS XE lab um, within my uh, VMware. I can just change the actual interfaces to gigabit and or create my sub interfaces using my gigabit, you know, uh, interface descriptor and then have this go and configure this exact same topology on the fly um, with minimal changes. I mean, you know, the IPs aren't going to change. All this stuff is pretty much going to be the same. So if I ever want to go back and do another NTLS lab or I started one and I don't really like the way it's going or I started one and did Oris, oh, EIGRP for the core, I can go back here and say, you know what, let's change this to OSPF uh, network broadcast or point to point and just have this push it out. Um, I tell you the powerfulness of the automation tools that they have available now is just amazing. But that was just a quick uh, demonstration of me doing a full MPLS uh, uh, lab build out using Ansible. If you guys have any questions, comments, let me know. Peace.